We have two more companies in this round. Up next, from Oakland, California, is Bionics AI. Presenting for Bionics AI is Robbie Bushami and Chaskin Saroff. Bring them on out, guys. My name is Robbie Bustami. At Biotics AI, we're using AI to detect fetal abnormalities. I set out to build a platform that improves the overall quality diagnostics and makes sure that every single pregnant patient gets the quality of care that they need. I was raised by a family of obstetricians. My mother, her sister, her brother all worked in maternal care. My mother passionately worked to improve maternal outcomes in her home country of Yemen as a physician and as a Berkeley researcher. Growing up, I fell in love with coding at the age of nine. But being around my mother's work, I became acutely aware of the growing problems of pregnancy care. In the United States, $16 billion are lost annually as a result of preventable maternal complications. With the increasing shortage of OBGYNs, the growing rate of pregnancy complications, and new legislation negatively impacting maternal diagnostics, it's becoming more difficult to identify these problems earlier to prevent tragic outcomes. In the developed world, half of pregnant patients with a fetal malformation are misdiagnosed due to an error in ultrasound by ultrasound operators. Globally, 107 million mothers do not have access to the minimum standard diagnostic ultrasound. This is the number one reason for misdiagnosis for the mass majority of fetal abnormalities. Introducing Biotics AI. Biotics AI helps detect fetal abnormalities in ultrasound earlier with greater frequency and higher efficiency. What you're going to be seeing is a real prenatal ultrasound exam, where what we've done is to protect the patient's confidentiality and security is download the exam to a local machine, remove any identifiable information, but we'll be uploading the screening live for you to see how our AI will process the screening. Move to Zoom. We have with us today our chief medical officer, Dr. Sham Al-Gamal, a maternal fetal medicine specialist, along with a patient who, for the purposes of this presentation, we've nicknamed Sara, who's been kind enough to spend time with us today. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So um, I've just conducted a second trimester fetal anatomical examination using ultrasound. Actually, what I did is I intentionally mimicked a low quality ultrasound scan. And with these low quality ultrasound scans, key regions in the fetal brain, heart, abdomen, and limbs are usually missing. So let us see if Biotics AI could solve this very common operator dependent error. So I'll log into Biotics AI. I'll start my reporting. Move to demo. <coughs> This is, what Biotics, this is what Dr. Isham is viewing right now. Biotics AI is a vendor-agnostic cloud-based solution that can integrate with any ultrasound machine over a standard API. Biotics AI has processed the entirety of SARA's ultrasound exam to validate the completeness and quality of the screening, ensuring the appropriate capture of over 80 different anatomical views and structures, providing feedback to Dr. Isham if he missed any key regions. A third of patients in the United States receive incomplete screenings. <clears throat> and if there's an abnormality in one of these regions that doesn't get captured, then the patient is almost always misdiagnosed. Move to Zoom. So as you have seen uh, through Biotics AI, some feedback <clears throat> came back that some images are missing from the scan. So I have re-scanned the patient, and I have recaptured the transferability plane. And now I'll upload the image back into the system to see if the error has been rectified. Move to demo. So what we've done is now we've uploaded a new image. Earlier, Dr. Sham did not screen for one of the standard views of the fetal brain. But because our solution provided that feedback, Dr. Sham can now make sure that he's captured the entirety of the screening and RAI has validated the completeness of the scan by ensuring that all of the key structures in this region have been appropriately captured. 
Now, Sada is having a healthy pregnancy, and we give her all of our best thoughts and prayers as she continues along this journey. But our solution does not stop at quality control, it actually moves into guided diagnostics. Here's an example of a pregnant patient with a fetal malformation in the fetal spine. Our AI was able to localize this fetal malformation, providing feedback to the obstetrician so that way this abnormality doesn't go unnoticed and that appropriate intervention can be taken. Move to slides. We conducted clinical studies on obstetricians that historically performed poor quality ultrasound scans, and when Biodox AI was used, the screening completeness rate increased by 20%. Additionally, because our AI can extract all this valuable information, we were able to automate reporting and documentation and save up to eight minutes per patient on documentation, providing value to the patient, physician, and the hospital. Now, to build out our technology, it took a world-class team of machine learning engineers and obstetricians with previous experience in delivering prenatal care-based research and delivering complex machine learning algorithms for different types of use cases. As far as our business model goes, we're selling our solution to hospitals. We're leveraging a hybrid pricing model with a subscription-based charge for baseline subscription costs and a volume-based pricing model for API calls to our algorithms. Hospitals are incentivized to leverage our solution because of the valuable ROI we're providing through time savings that they're able to receive through increased volume that they can get with patients, reducing the number of patient callbacks, mitigating costs around medical malpractice, and, and increased hospital reimbursements in the future as we qualify for NTAP. And I'm sorry we're out of time. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Give them a round of applause. Where was your doctor located? Uh, Dr. Sham is actually in Egypt. So we partnered with university hubs uh, in Alexandria, Tonta Zazia, Cairo, um, and partnered with physicians uh, that are leaders in maternal diagnostics there to build out our initial uh, data sets. So right on. Uh, Sarah, let's start with you. Yeah, I was wondering if you could um, speak to the ultrasound market. Like, how fragmented is it? It sounds like you're going direct to hospitals and not engaging with the hardware players themselves. But if you could just... Um, give us sort of the lay of the land in the ultrasound market as it relates to your strategy. Sure, yeah, so, uh, so we're a software as a medical device. Um, so where we really fit within the ultrasound market is actually in these post-processing ultrasound solutions. Um, these are reporting solutions. Uh, the most common ones are Viewpoint 6, uh, AS Software, uh, and these are third-party solutions that are used today for documenting and reviewing the medical images. And that's really, really where we sit today. Um, as far as uh, the overall size of the market that we're going to be tackling with our initial solution, we're looking at roughly $2 billion um, for quality control and for automating reporting and documentation. As far as our go-to-market strategy goes, it's going to be a combination of leveraging distribution channel partnerships uh, and going directly to hospitals. Maybe just a follow-up. Uh, on that software layer, are you purely additive to that, or is this a situation where you're replacing that tool, more of a rip and replace, but your, thing, your widget is better than theirs? Sure, yeah, so it's a, it's a combination of the two. So uh, we can either work with these players or we can um, replace existing archaic solutions if hospitals are no longer happy with them. Um, but yeah, I can't, we are, we're under NDAs, so I, I can't go too farther into detail. But, Thanks. Yeah. Libby? Sure. Um, kind of expanding on the, the market question, can you talk a little bit about competition and, um, you know, with AI tools being so widely available uh, to so many, um, what you think can put any single company ahead in that market? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, so the last piece uh, that we were going to go for was really uh, talk about our data moat. Um, so really our long-term vision is to be the AI diagnostics platform for reproductive health. So we're starting with obstetrics, but we're moving into adjacent specialties like gynecology, urology, and neonatology. Um, we've built out an underlying data infrastructure that's allowed us to build out our data set of over 8 million prenatal ultrasound images, partner with eight uh, healthcare institutions. This costs the average corporation tens of millions of dollars. We've bootstrapped it with less than $100,000. Um, and this growing data mode is really going to be our unfair advantage as far as being able to capitalize on the market. As far as the existing players go, um, ultrasound machine manufacturers are mostly working with startups like us um, because they're not going to focus on every single niche use case. Um, they're really competing with each other in regards to their business models. Um, and then there are a few incumbents that are coming in that are uh, around the world that are focusing on this problem as well, um, which is a good thing because this is a big problem. So, Paul? Yeah, I'm going to say something that's 
probably never been said on this stage before. You had me at Egypt. Because <laughs> I was wondering about your data mode and how you'd actually do this, but I have three medical AI companies out of Egypt and I know exactly how we did it. My guess is you know them and they're your friends and we understand how we train in AI better than anyone else in the world. So I have no questions. <laughs> All right. Oh, the waste. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a good line. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go to Steve. When you talk to um, OBGYN, uh, specialty offices, hospitals, health systems, what's the number one pushback that you're getting from them today? Sure, yeah. I think, I mean, when it comes to actually like selling to hospitals, you're selling to the physician, uh, you're selling also to the hospital, the financial decision maker. Um, so you want to make sure that you're providing value to both. So when it comes to like value for physicians, you know, it's really coming down to making sure that they're not, they don't have any difficulty around like leveraging a new technology and you want to make sure that you integrate seamlessly within their existing technology. So you're not accidentally adding in more workloads. So it's really important to hone in on the, how that product fits within that workflow. Um, in regards to the decision makers for the, finan uh, the financial decision makers, it really comes down to what is the return on investment and making sure we've made a clear use case around this is how quality control improved diagnostics actually improves ROI for the hospital. So. On the workflow question or, or in your answer there, do they prefer it as a third party software application to look at post-processed images or do they want it as part of the embedded system? Like do they want it in the Samsung rig and like what's, what's, what's their ideal, the customer's ideal versus obviously yours is not to be embedded? Right, yeah, so, well, so, so uh, I guess there, there's two parts to answering this question. As far as uh, the customer's ideal, at the end of the day, they're already using these third-party softwares for post-processing. Mm -hmm. So they're not necessarily really doing these types of reviews directly on the ultrasound machines with the exception of one potential solution um, that's used today in the market. So it's not a huge deviation. Now, as far as how we integrate seamlessly with ultrasound machines, I mean, we're, we have a vendor agnostic solution. We can actually plug directly via an iPad into the ultrasound machine so it's right there for them. So there's no real difference to the OBGYN. So we can actually accommodate both workflows. If they'd rather leverage their own desktops, their own laptops for post-processing and for evaluating the actual ultrasounds, we can do that. If they want it on site, which actually you kind of saw to, uh, with Dr. Isham with his tablet next to the ultrasound machine. He can also have uh, access to the solution right then and there. So last question goes to Mark. Can you talk quickly about distribution channels a bit? So what does it cost you to get a hospital, obtain a hospital directly versus via, I don't know if you're talking about trade associations or something of the like, but we'd love to understand your different channels of, of go to market. You have sure, 15 yes. seconds. Um, so uh, going direct to hospital, so we've tried to make our solution as self-service as possible. Really the costs go into like the labor costs around making sure that we're working with the IT systems and we're getting security approvals. Um, if we're just looking at outside of labor costs, maximum $2,000 per like institution with potential for like millions, a million dollars on what the contract sizes could be. In regards to distribution channels, we are uh, looking at, so there's existing healthcare software solutions that we could leverage that are integrated within obstetrics workflows. Um, but there's also marketplaces that ultrasound machine manufacturers are providing. And then there's other distribution channels. Um, for example, like malpractice firms actually can actually promote certain solutions if it actually decreases costs on their, on their side because you're mitigating malpractice cases. So. Thank you so much. Give them a round of applause.